Welcome to Shenandoah National Park. The leaves here are starting to change and it is giving me so much joy. Most people don't think of wine when they think of Virginia, but Shenandoah Valley is a beautiful wine country. Epic, just epic. Nature is incredible. <laughs> but boy, that was a lot. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Welcome to Shenandoah National Park. You may notice from my attire that um, I'm dressed a little bit differently than our past few vlogs. That's because a cold front has just come through and fall is officially upon us. We have been anxiously awaiting the fall season. We were really hoping to see the leaves change in New York, but it's just been a really hot fall so far. And I think things are happening later in the season. So when we noticed a cold front was coming through right as we were starting to head south to be back home for Florida for winter, we rushed to get to Shenandoah National Park. I think we're still a bit early, but the leaves here are starting to change and it is giving me so much joy. So we are going to start by getting outside, enjoying the sunshine and seeing as much fall as we can, starting with a hike at Dark Hollow, which is about five minutes from our campground at Big Meadows in Shenandoah National Park. Let's do this. One of the reasons Dark Hollow Trail is such a popular hike is because it's short. It's three quarter miles one way, so just about 1.5 miles round trip, but it is steep. You're pretty much going downhill the entire time. And the waterfall at the end is a huge reward. It's beautiful, but we are about to start the incline back. We're strong, we're healthy, we're fit. We got this. I've derobed, because I'm sure I'm gonna work up a sweat. I'm ready, let's do this. Uphill. Very steep coming back up. Gonna be sucking a little bit of wind. But that just goes to show you that we haven't been doing much hiking, at least not in elevations. It was awesome. What's going on? What? What? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Honestly, I'm trying to make chili, and I didn't get all the instructions before I just started kamikazeing, and I'm messing it up. But you know what? It's all good because it's still going to be delicious. Our campsite doesn't have electricity, and we're using electric items. Yeah, so we're running the generator, but the problem is this takes like six hours uh, to cook properly and we only have maybe 15 minutes left before a generator cut off. So there's that. Onions. Woo! Oh, I know there's so many wives tales about ways you can get rid of that. It's like the onions secreting some type of oil or something. Chemical warfare. I think so. I'll link this chili recipe below. It is lectin free, so it's like an anti-inflammatory chili. Also, if you haven't caught on, I'm eating meat again. I was vegetarian or pescatarian rather, I ate fish for like nine years, but I'm back on the meat bandwagon. Sorry if that disappoints any of you, but I'm solidly happy with my choice. 
<laughs> Watch some Kill Bill. None of that. Hi. You're so pretty. Meow. Pilar's been sitting in the front of the RV to stay warm. I don't blame her. It's cold. <laughs> Since it was such a beautiful day, we hopped on the scooter, taking a scenic ride down Skyline Drive, a 105 mile long road that starts in Front Royal at Shenandoah National Park and eventually turns into the Blue Ridge Parkway further south. We had a blast taking the twists and turns and watching the changing leaves as we made our way to our next stop for the day, a hike at Hawksbill Gap. out of breath. We decided to go clockwise on the Hawksbill Loop Trail and it is the most direct way to the overlook, meaning it's very steep. I think it's like a 670 foot elevation gain in a very short period of time. We've had to stop a lot. We made it. I think I was three quarter of a mile, but boy, that was a lot. If you prefer to take the easier route, go counterclockwise. I think it'd be a, a lot easier. But we made it to the Vista Point and it is beautiful. Windy at the top and very cold. I need my hat. You can see little pops of color coming through. It's still a really long ways off from being full peak color, which is definitely disappointing, but it's still beautiful. And it's really hard to capture that color on camera here. We don't have like super crazy long lenses and things like that, but you just kind of have to come and see it for yourself. I wonder what it's like where you are. It's so hard to chase fall. Normally, three weeks into October is peak, but not this year. Here, Bear Bear. Where are you at, Bear Bear? Shenandoah National Park is home to black bears. Our first time here, we did see a black bear right at sunset. He ran across the road in front of our truck. It was so cool, it was a huge one. So we really would love to see more black bears this time. Someone at the summit of the hike we just finished told us that black bears often hang out in the trees and everyone's always looking on the ground level for them. But really, you need to look up. My eyes are peeled. It was nice. I'm glad we decided to go clockwise and we did the steep portion first actually because it was a very nice leisure stroll back to the scooter. <laughs> and we hit part of the AT. We did like a mile on the Appalachian Trail. There was nobody on that section of the hike. I don't know if that's because it's, it's a shorter distance out and back on just the Hawksbill Trail instead of doing the whole loop. But if the rest of the Appalachian Trail is as beautiful as what we experienced on that little one mile stretch, I'm ready to hike the rest of it. I'd be into that. I'd probably do that hike. Let us know in the comments if you guys would like to see some Appalachian backcountry trail hiking, camping. I don't even know what to call it. Clearly I need a lot of research before we do that, but let us know if it's something that you would be interested in watching. Maybe we'll add that to our adventure bucket list in the future. <laughs> but we- Maybe. <laughs> maybe, we'll see. But we did hear about a really cool hike called Old Rag. It's supposed to be one of the most famous hikes in all of the U.S. The top 15 in the U.S. apparently. And it is a monster hike. It's definitely for you adventurers out there. It's nine and a half miles round trip and it's a 2600 foot elevation game. So that's like game. game. Gain. <laughs> so it Would is you like, think it's a game? No, nah, no, no, <laughs> I don't. It's not a game. That's why we're not doing it. <laughs> well, it's like something you come here for. But the good news is 
if you're coming here, there's so many different hikes to choose from. Uh, there's no shortage of awesome trails. You can choose short ones like we did or go for those monster hikes. You don't even have to hike. You can go on a little pleasure cruise down Skyline Drive and just stop at the overlooks like... We're about to do right now. Yeah. Let's do it. probably three to four dozen overlooks. This Skyline Drive goes forever. We haven't been able to see all of the different vista points, but we did pass this the other night as we were coming to our campground, right as the sun was setting, and uh, Spittler's Knoll is definitely the spot for sunsets. Right now, it's Wednesday. There's not many people here. By this time, it was already packed when we passed. Yeah, this whole like row that wraps around the corner here was totally packed with cars. So I think it might be like a peaceful little, just a few people watching the sun go down. Epic, just epic. It's just hard not to look at a huge mountain landscape like this with the sun setting and not just be blown away. Nature is incredible. I feel, both of us feel so grateful to be able to be here and witness it and that this is a, a Wednesday night for us. But we are very cold, <laughs> so we're gonna hop on the scooter before it gets too dark and go back to the campground and get all cozy, maybe have a cup of tea, make some yummy dinner. It's also a full moon tonight, so we're really hoping we'll be able to catch the moon rise just after watching such a gorgeous sunset. We tried to get a stamp in our National Parks passport book, but they don't let you touch the stamps right now. So we ended up getting like a pre-stamped sticker that we can add to our book, but the last time we were here was November 1st, 2017. That's why I love this book, because it keeps track of all your memories, all the places you've been. We'll have a link to this and many other things we love for full-time RV life in the description below. But now we're gonna go down the valley because there's more to explore than Shenandoah than just the beautiful National Park. Oh. <laughs> Finally. I didn't mean to do that. This sure. thing's hard to unlock sometimes. Yes, it can be. That's good. Don't break in. <laughs> I don't care what the sign says. If I even if I know that it's tall enough for us to have plenty of room to safely pass through the tunnel, I'm always like, <laughs> it made me cringe every time. And the reason I cringe every time, if you haven't seen our Guanajuato video, go check that out. But we hit a tunnel with the side of the RV. also known for wine. Most people don't think of wine when they think of Virginia, but Shenandoah Valley is a beautiful wine country with dozens of different vineyards to enjoy. We first found out about this area in our first trip out here four years ago. We stayed at a Harvest Host Desert Rose. It's no longer open, which is so sad. The owners were so sweet. But during our stay, we ended up coming to Rappahannock Cellars and we loved their wine here. So we made sure to come back and visit during this trip as well. So we each have a glass of wine. I'm drinking the Cab Franc. Dennis has a beautiful 18, which is like a blend. And we were able to snag a bottle of the Solera, which is this really unique 
dessert wine that has like this nutty almond flavor to it, maybe like pecans. And they ferment the grapes on glass vats on the roof. And we bought this bottle our first trip, but they're no longer making it. So we had to make sure we got a bottle. I'm really glad. <laughs> they, only had, they only had two cases left. Two cases left. Yeah. We did drive our RV here, but I would not recommend that based on their parking situation. We're not staying here. We are just making this one stop of our grand wine tour. We are also going to be going to a harvest host. There's several harvest host vineyards in the area to enjoy. I think we're gonna be staying at Shenandoah Vineyards, which is the second oldest winery in Shenandoah Valley, which is pretty cool. I think they have pizza. We'll do a little, a nice little flight to enjoy and just kind of rest and take in the beautiful weather down here because it is much warmer <laughs> than it was up on the mountains. I think this is gonna pretty much wrap up our Shenandoah video. There is so much more you can do in this area. It's absolutely beautiful and I'm so sad we didn't quite hit those peak leaves. I think it's gonna be about another week, week and a half before that happens. So hopefully if you're coming here, you're able to see that. It all comes down to those super chilly nights, guys. You just kind of got to watch the weather if you're coming here for the leaves like us. But we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments below. Subscribe, of course, if you have not subscribed to the channel. And we will see you next week. Thanks for traveling with us. Cheers. So we're going to start with a hike at... What hike Dark. are we doing? Dark Canyon, wasn't it like dark? No. no, dark. I have it in this yeah, right here. No, I have it right here. Check the map. Dark Hollow, good job. I knew it was dark something. <laughs> <laughs> See, <my gosh. laughs>